Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Since Top Gun and somewhat Tom Cruise has pretty much everything to do with the problems in the racing world, I decided to wear some shades to start this video. Take the damn shades right off. Now, what I really wanted to talk about was the numbers, the documents. We have the results in hand from our Kenny Wallace talk debate conversation. Now, apparently, the Chaz just sat back and talked. Kenny Wallace did not get to talk at all. That's what you would have heard if you would have listened to the biased people out there. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? Numbers never lie. So the total talking time of this whole Kenny Wallace discussion, the total talking time, actually I read it down right, was one hour, eight minutes, and 35 seconds. Within the first section, I, 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 uh, sections of things written down on a piece of paper, from section zero seconds to 12 minutes and five seconds into the conversation, Kenny Wallace had spoke five minutes, in 13 seconds, the Chaz talked in the first 12 minutes and 5 seconds of this discussion for 3 minutes and 41 seconds. From minute 12, second 6, to minute 40, second 7, Kenny Wallace talked for 8 minutes and 1 second. And in this opening dialogue of the reasons and things that I think where I'm trying to lay out my thoughts on racing so that we can get Kenny's response... The Chaz talked for 18 minutes and 2 seconds in a little under 30 minute span. So, I did talk a lot in that section and that's a, a part of putting out there what we are going to talk or discuss about. I'm having to lead the conversation. And this makes even more sense from minute 40 to minute 54. Kenny Wallace talked 7 minutes and 12 seconds and Chaz talked four minutes and four seconds. On the ending dialogue, Kenny Wallace talked for six minutes and 14 seconds, and the Chaz talked for seven minutes. Totaling out, Roy, the moderator, talked for 11 minutes and eight seconds. Kenny Wallace, who didn't get to speak, no one, no one got to, I just talked over him the entire, he, you, you didn't hear him speak at all, talked for 26 minutes and 40 seconds. And me, Chaz, the, the, the personality, the things that has to, that, that's talking about controversial issues and trying to get responses, trying to lay things and thoughts out to get a response from Kenny Wallace, talked for an amazing, dominant 32 minutes and 47 seconds. Those are the stats. Now, in these talks... I didn't necessarily count where we were cutting each other off and debating back and forth. I counted those as mixed times. Um, you can see I put mix, and I would take that time and divide it in half and, and give me and Kenny both the uh, uh, split seconds or time allotted in that mixed time frame. So, for those out there who said I just talked and Kenny didn't get to talk, we're almost at 50%. Now, there was a discussion in there. What do you want to do, Chaz? There's nothing you can do. Yeah, there is something you can do. We're in social media. You know, and he said I was a victim of social media when we discussed the Brexton Bush situation. I, I, I don't really see that as me being a victim of the Brexton Bush situation. That shows you the power of media, whether it's social or not. He also described how... Um, Back in the day, there were these stars, Elvis Presley's and all that, and now anyone can be a star. You know what I would say to that? Good. I am so damn happy that a damn owner of a broadcast media company or an owner of a record label, some big daddy on top, isn't controlling what you, the viewer, are allowing to be seen. So the great thing about social media is that there is a freedom of choice. No one dictates whether you watch me or like me or anything. The only person who dictates if you watch or like me is you. Seeing things from other people's perspectives, getting out from under the big daddy's illusions. Social media is amazing, it's great. 
And that's why I've been on this social media saying what I've been saying. And if you notice, I'm kind of one of the only ones saying it because I'm not paid or sponsored to say anything differently. There was one segment that was about five minutes long. And Kenny Wallace responded, yeah, all you just said is true, but there's nothing you can do about it. Well, guess what? There ain't just one big or two daddies up there owning all the media outlets and somebody can get on here and say truth without them controlling if truth can come out or not. And I had something written down that I wanted to say to Kenny Wallace about this, this topic. Media controls the minds of people. And this is racing based. Racing isn't around people in high school like other sports. So media is telling people what the high school of racing is. Larson and Bell, the dirt racers in NASCAR, are used by NASCAR to keep this notion valid. This is why they reject older drivers and try to retire drivers and bring in young drivers often. This is mainly because the system is funded by hopes and dreams. Middle-aged people will not quit dirt racing and drop millions to try and be a NASCAR driver. But a mother or father will drop million, millions to hopefully give their child their dreams. But this needs to go back to where how racing operated properly. Where to be a star racer, it doesn't mean being a NASCAR racer, but a top performer in any of the realms in motorsports. IndyCar, drag racing, dirt. This is documented. This was real. This happened. But the system that is obvious does not want that because of the money on the line. Lots of work, time, effort to, where they, to be where they are today. The IRL and CART split. The Hollywood movies. Two generations is what's needed to brainwash a society. And that is where we are with NASCAR taking over racing. 90s was the pop culture surge. Movies and TVs moved masses like never before because they were in front of the children's eyes. Social media is the only hope we have which is why there is a war against social media. In a very smart way though, because the big corporate entities have spent so much in controlling the narrative to the public. And that is why social media is so important and the effects it has on racing and the things that you can do to change. There is hope, you can change things. But you know who wants to believe wants you to believe you have no power in this world, you can't do nothing about anything, that big daddy on top. He wants you to feel useless, like nothing you do or say will change anything. We can change it. We can tell everyone what's true, what isn't, what is and what ain't. Not you, though. No, not you. Social media, though, has allowed that to happen. And that's why there's a very slick war against social media. Very slick, very savvy, very smart. Very patriarchal. But this is how we ride, this is how we do. I must lie.